and they're off. In the Cavani menswear criterion stakes, seven furlongs ahead of them, Aldari, just a little slow into stride. And through the very early stages, Pogo is right up there towards the near side, racing alongside Sam Maximus, and they are giving a lead to Jumbi. The three over on the far side are Audience, who races alongside Berkshire Shadow, and just in behind them is Aldari. So two distinct groups as they race through the first two and a half furlongs. Leading the group on the near side is Pogo. He leads up to Sam Maximus, and third of the near side group is Jumbi. Meanwhile, over on the far side, it is Audience who leads the grey Berkshire Shadow and then Aldari. And now they're racing on down towards the final three furlongs where we have the scout camera, and we can see that both groups very close, just the overall lead to Audience over on the far side. So it's Audience giving the lead to Berkshire Shadow and Aldari. Towards the near side, Pogo chased by Jumbi and Sam Maximus. They race down into the and they now have a furlong and a half to go and all six of them fanning out across the track. Over on the far side is Audience. Aldari begins to burst through. Pogo picks it up on the near side together with Jumbi. Now they've got a half furlong to go. Audience now across towards the far side rail is the one who's got the lead. Jumbi and Pogo next, but it is Audience who wins. Tight second between Jumbi and Pogo. Aldari in fourth. John, very many congratulations. A horse who he's had an up and down career. Was it was the mark initially? Do you think the problem with him? No, he's always had a lot of talent, but he's he's been slightly an, an enigma really to deal with. A little bit, uh, he has his own ways. Leah, who looks after him and rides him every day, has actually been the key to the horse. She does the most brilliant job with him. He takes a lot of understanding, and and she can bring the best out of him. So it's not a great deal to do with the trainers. Um, obviously to do with the jockey because he rode it, but she would be a very integral part of this horse's uh, advance forward. Ryan rode him last year actually at, at, good, at uh, Royal Ascot and said this horse got a lot of talent, but you're going to have to dig to find it. Was there always a plan to just let him roll from the front or was that completely up to rub? I think from that draw on the outside it's uncomplicated, you know, we're not worried about getting him in behind and, and there's some nice fresh ground over that side actually, um, which we know a bit about because we live here and so you let him drift towards the nice fresh ground and it makes a difference. I guess in terms of this specialist kind of trip, the programme book kind of writes itself for you. Would you be at least considering taking in those kinds of races, your Lennox as your City of Yorks? Yes, we've, we've got him in the Lennox, yes, and that's a possibility. The City of York's a very attractive option as well. So look, they have got a nice programme now, you're right, uh, where it never used to exist and you're in no man's land between sprinters and milers, but it does exist now, which is very handy for a horse like him. Do you think he's going to come into his own as a four-year-old where he may not have as a three-year-old? I think we all come under our, into our own with age, don't we? <laughs> Thank you, John. Rap, many congratulations. It's taken a bit of trial and error, but he's really hit the ground running now. Yeah, well, I think we spent most of the time trying to work him out instead of just letting him get on with, <laughs> with what he knows him, him, himself, really. So, he obviously, uh, you just let him get on with it and he, and he does the rest. Always the plan to kick on from the front, given the draw. Well, it worked last year at Leicester. You say we tried dropping him back in trip. We tried dropping him in and hanging on to him and getting there late, and nothing really seemed to work. And uh, at Leicester, you know, obviously in his last start, I, I just jumped, put my hands on his neck and let him go on with it. And, and uh, we thought, oh, that's the key. So there we go. Is he a horse who you feel those quirks will kind of define him going forward? Just let him, let him get on with it. We know roughly what he might be, and let's not try and iron them out. Well, I think the more we were trying to iron them out, we were kind of stopping his progress because, uh, like I felt today, he was a little bit calmer and and more tractable. And you know, at points in the race, I could say, you know, whoa, even though he had the hood on, and and he was responding to like a little squeeze in the ribs and things, and you know, so hopefully he can progress and he, he can't. Hopefully he doesn't have to be so one-dimensional in the future because he's not always going to get small fields like this and, and get the space that you get here. So, uh, like, hopefully he's a work in progress and now we're letting him get on where he can, he can start improving. And on a, home, on a home game, on a personal note, this is a great race for you to win, something that you've been in and around Newmarket for many years now, winning group races still. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the aim every year. So um, they're hard to find and hard to get on and... You know, probably easier to win than it's a little bit harder to get on them than than, than, than to win them. So, uh, you know, just grateful for the opportunities. Do you have a main name at the start of every season? 
yeah, stay safe. <laughs> and ride as many wins as possible. Well done, Rob. Thanks. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.